Ants organize themselves in a flawless manner. Yet they have no hierarchy among them and no ant organizes the colony. Despite that, every ant miraculously knows what it has to do. The distribution of labor was set out before they were born and ants perform their jobs to perfection. That does not just apply to leafcutter ants, but is to be seen in all species. These features that ants possess once again demonstrate the invalidity of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. It is well known that the theory of evolution claims that all living things came about as a result of blind coincidences. No coincidence, however, could ever endow ants with the features of cooperation, self-sacrifice, discipline, and planning that they possess. No coincidence can make every one out of 500,000 ants work to a single end. The theory of evolution claims that living things need to be in a permanent state of struggle to the death to survive and regards this as the fundamental mechanism of evolution. However, the theory of evolution can never account for how ant society built on sacrifice and sharing could have come about. The theory of evolution also maintains that living things acquired the characteristics they possess in stages as a result of changes brought about by mutations. But that means that the social order exhibited by ants must have come about by stages and that is impossible. That is because as we have seen in this film an ant colony is made up of ants with different functions. And if even one of those functions failed to be carried out, that would spell the end of the colony. Let us consider the leafcutter ants as an example. If the soldier ants did not defend the nest, if the workers did not cut the leaves, if highways were not built to carry those leaves, if giant walls were not built by a cooperative effort, if the leaves brought to the nest were not cleaned one by one, then none of the other jobs would serve any purpose and the ants would be unable to grow their fungus. That would mean all the ants in the colony starving to death. The planned way in which the whole system has been set up can be understood more clearly if we look at it in greater detail. For instance, if there were no zinc coating on the blades of the ants that do the cutting, if they were unable to produce the antiseptic liquid to protect the colony from bacteria, if the temperature and humidity in the nest were not carefully regulated, and if all the ants did not behave in a totally disciplined fashion, the other characteristics possessed by the ants would again have no meaning, as they would all die shortly. That is because the colony can only survive if all these things exist together. That shows that ants could not have come by their attributes in stages. In other words, they could not have evolved. On the contrary, ants were created at a single moment together with the perfect structures and many other features that we have been watching. 
Another proof that ants were created with all their flawless characteristics emerges when we examine the fossil record. The 80 million year old fossil ant you are seeing is one of the oldest ant fossils in the world. The interesting thing about it is that it is no different from present day ants. This definitely proves that ants suddenly came into being with all their particular characteristics and have undergone no evolution right down to the present day. In short, ants did not come about by evolution. God created their flawless bodies and the social systems they possess.